everyone and welcome to this tutorial on how to access the research database EBSCOhost. Now this is pretty simple to do um, once you have accessed the NGC library website which I hope you remember how to do from our previous tutorials. Once you are on the NGC library website just remember across the top we have tabs to access all the different parts of the website. In order to get to the research database EBSCOhost, you need to click on the Symbolu page. When you scroll down, you should see that each of these tiles here, um, this is these are all actually links to different resources. Um, if you're looking for uh, resources to help with your research, the second half of the first row and the entire second row and part of the third row are all designed to help you with research, creating citations, and improving the overall quality of your writing. Now, since today we are focusing on the database EBSCO, that's the one I want to show you first. So right here, if you want to find the EBSCO link, it is the very last tile in the second row. Now you'll notice here that it has a username and password underneath. Um, the only time you will need this is if you are accessing the EBSCO research database off of the school network. If you're trying to get on it on the school network, it will automatically take you in. So the first thing you need to do is simply click on the link and it's going to take you to this EBSCO homepage. Now this can look a little daunting because you're, you're probably thinking, what am I supposed to click on? Well, the very first thing you need to do is to decide where in EBSCO you want to research. Now, since you guys are officially high school students, the best thing you can use is Explora High School because this is designed, um, it's a platform designed with uh, high school students in mind. Okay, so now you can see we are on the home page for Explora High School. And we can see here that there are um, some like popular topics under all of our really popular categories, um, like art and literature, biographies, business and government, and so on. Um, so it's possible that the topic you're researching is right here on the home page. Um, if that's the case, you can simply just click on one of these links and it will take you to a variety of resources on this topic. Now more than likely you guys are probably um, going to research something very specific because it's probably something you've been assigned as a class. Um, so if that's the case you want to use this, re um, this search bar up here at the top. Um, so for example let's say that you need to create a pers uh, persuasive argument on climate change. So you can see here as soon as I typed in climate there are several suggested um, research terms that are right here just for you to click on. Now keep in mind that a database search is not like a Google search. It's not going to say things like did you mean or if you ask it a question it's not going to be able to determine what it is you really want to know. Like you can't say what is the evidence for climate change or what is the evidence against climate change. You actually need to put um, like climate change and evidence for climate change and evidence against. Um, so for here we're going to click on climate climate change or global warming. So when you click on this, it'll take a minute or two to get you all of your results. Now this is a very popular topic right now. So you can see right here it's saying that we have results 1 through 20 of 180,526. There is no way you guys are going to be able to go through all of those resources, nor should you want to. Nobody has time for that. So you can actually put limiters on your search to make sure that you're getting the best quality of research. And the way you can do that is over here on the left hand side. Um, so for example, you can see right here this full text button is clicked. You do want to make sure that this is always clicked because if you don't, it's going to actually give you more results. Um, but what it'll do is it'll say something like, hey, there's this great book about climate change and here's the author and here's the publication company but that book is not actually on this database. So it's going to show you a great resource that exists, it's just not on here. So that's not really helpful if you need to cite it. Um, next, um, do you want scholarly peer-reviewed journals? Um, this would kind of eliminate things that were like posted in magazines, and newspapers, you know, it would only be things um, by academics in the field of global, global warming. So if you really want to limit your search, you can definitely do that. Um, like right here, it shows you that the publication dates for your topic are from 1945 to 2020. Now the problem with um, 
with this really wide range of publication dates is that the science of climate change is always evolving. So something written in 1945 is not really the best thing to cite in an argument about the current situation for global warming. So you can click this tab and drag it until you have a much smaller window. Like let's say I only want things published in the last 10 or 11 years. So we've got 2009 to 2020. Okay, so that eliminated over 75,000 results, which is going to help. Now you can scroll down here. It says these are the um, different types of sources on this database. And this is one of those really great things about a database is it's not just one type of source. So you can see we've got academic journals, trade publications, there are magazines, there are newspapers, there are reports, books, um, biographies, encyclopedias, there are even ebooks. So if your teacher says that in your paper, your research paper, you have to have one magazine, one journal entry, and one encyclopedia article, you can get all of them right here. Just limit your search just to academic journals. Limit your search just to magazines. Limit your search just to encyclopedias. And then even though all those resources came from EBSCO, they are actually different types of resources coming from different sources. So it helps make sure that, once again, you're doing really good research. Um, you also have the option to do Lexile range. So if you guys know um, that we, you know, we know how we take that SRI test in your history classes um, once a quarter, usually, um, you get a score back with the Lexile range. It kind of tells you like where you are in your reading ability. If you want, you can actually limit the article results to your Lexile range. Um, and it'll show you how many there are in each range. So for example, if you're reading at like a 900 to 1000 level, 1,600 of these articles are probably going to be a little bit too dense for you to read easily. So instead, we can say, I only want articles written at my level. Okay, now we're down to about 3,300 results, and this is great. So we can see here now that on this page in the middle, we have all of our results. Now, you can see we have the title of the article. There's all the information about the publication it came from. There is a little brief um, summary about what it's about. Um, but to actually access the uh, resource, there are two different formats. Um, you can see right here the Game On for Global Warming. Right here it says HTML Full Text and PDF Full Text. So if you click HTML Full Text, this means your result actually looks more like a web page. Now there are some options for things that you can do. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because it's going to be loud. Um, when you do the HTML option, you do have the option to listen. Paul Hawken, Game on for Global Warming. Contents. One, disclosure statement. Okay, and it will actually go through and it will read this entire article to you. Now you do have other options, like maybe you really hate that American accent, you can change it to a, an Australian accent or a British accent. Paul Hawken, Game on for Global Warming. Contents. So maybe if you have trouble, um, you know, reading this silently to yourself, you can actually listen to it. Um, so you do have some options with how you manipulate this resource. Okay, we're going to go ahead and go back. Okay, so next we have this other option. This is the PDF full text. Um, so this came from a periodical. So when you click the PDF full text, it's basically going to show you what it actually looked like in the print format. So it's going to have pictures, um, you know, it's going to have the page numbers, it's going to have the copyright information on the bottom. It's going to look, you know, it's going to look a little bit different. Um, but it is the same exact resource. It is the exact same information. It's just structured a little bit differently. So if you have a resource that you want right here, you have several options now for how to manipulate this. And this is what is really wonderful, is you have a lot of options on how to save and utilize these resources as compared to doing research like just using the internet or Google. Um, so if you look over here to the right, you can see there are a variety of buttons here, um, and all of them are designed to help you um, save and cite your research. Um, one of the first ones right here, you can see there's a little Google icon. If you click on that, it's going to ask you to log into your Google account. 
and you can see right here it says your document has been saved to your Google Drive so now no matter where you log into your Google Drive this resource is saved so you'll never lose it you'll never have to worry about finding it again um, in the past I have had kids um, come up here to the top and they want to just copy and paste this URL and they think that that's going to help you help them find it later However, that does not work because this is a database. It's only provided to schools or people who pay for this service. So if you just try to use this link on another server, it's going to block you. It will not take you to the resource. And you're going to have done a lot of work and a lot of research and not be able to access any of it. So it's much better to download it right here to your Google Drive. Um, if you don't want to save it to your Google Drive or if you really like having a hard copy, you have the option right here to print it. So that way maybe you can highlight it or cut it up or however you want to do it. Um, there are other options too. There's emails. There's creating folders. Um, this button right here though, this is going to be your lifesaver. This is the citation button. So if you decide that you are going to use this article, you need to make sure you hit this button to get your citation. Now you can see right here it's showing you all the different formats you can use to cite this resource in your research paper. Now for an English class, you're going to use MLA. So right here, here is the properly formatted MLA citation for this document. So you can simply copy and maybe paste this to a Google Doc titled Works Cited page. And now you have one resource saved to your Google Drive and you have the Works Cited citation for that resource saved on a kind of a working Works Cited page. This way you don't have to go back later to get all this stuff, it's already there for you. And if you decide later on that you're not going to use it, like you didn't need to cite anything from it, just delete it. Um, if you're going to do something um, for like science class, a lot of times you're going to use more th um, things like APA. So there are different styles of citations there for you to make sure that you're not plagiarizing anybody's work. Um, there are some other buttons here that I want to show you. Um, we have the export button, so if there's like a certain, um, like if you want to export it as a PDF and then save it, you can, but really that's just an extra step. Um, but right here, there, there's a permalink button. If you click on this, you'll notice up here that there is a URL that pops up. If you really want to save the link to this page, so that way you can come back right to the spot with all the links and all the information, you can copy and paste this link right here to a working document. Now this link is designed um, basically to show a server that you do have access to this database and it will get you past any blocks that might pop up. So if you copy and paste this URL, it will take you to your resource. This one will not. Okay, so that's kind of just a little brief rundown on how to use um, Explora High School. So if you need to go back to your search, you can hit result list. Okay, so here you are back at your results page. So you can see you're right back to where you started. You have all of your results for your search with your limiters. Um, so you can see pretty easy that this is, a, this is really a great way to do research because there is a ton of information. A lot of it has been peer reviewed by experts in the field. So you know that whoever wrote it actually knows what they're talking about. They're not actually just making stuff up. And you can save them easily to your iPads as well as get those pre-made citations, which is going to save you so much work down the road. Um, so if you ever have any trouble um, using this resource or if you need help kind of walking through it again, um, please come to the library to see me. Um, I would love to sit down with you and kind of walk you through this um, to help you guys get any research done that you need done for your classes.